Do you remember how old you were when you had your first drink of alcohol? I do. I was uh, about 11, 12 years old. Uh, I remember it was uh, vodka. And, um, you know, when you're 11 years old and you're having a, your first drink and it's vodka, it's, uh, I guess it's pretty profound. How soon thereafter did it become a, sort of a regular thing? I think it really started to um, really get going. I think when you know, I got about 16, 17, got in high school, and I don't know what it was, but I just could not get comfortable in my own skin. With my personality, the only way to be comfortable was to drink and do drugs. When did the drugs enter the picture? Um, you know, I, I probably started smoking weed when I was in high school. When I got to my mid-twenties, uh, different drugs started to enter. And, what kind of? Um, you know, cocaine um, was a big one for me. Molly and uh, mushrooms, I mean, all kinds of different things. Did you ever play hockey drunk or high? Uh, never in a game. I mean, definitely hung over. <laughs> um, I practice high on different drugs. There's a lot of instances where I did that. So when it comes to like the hard drugs like that, did any of the guys on the team know? There was an instance I know with Ryan Getzlaff where he said to me, Nate, what's going on? It's okay to get some help. And I said, I'm okay, Getzy, I'll be all right. And I remember sitting down with him one time and I showed him my phone a picture or something like that and he swiped through a picture and there was a picture of uh, drugs on my phone and he looked at me and kind of looked at me like this and I just I remember that vividly because I just felt this shame but it still didn't stop me. So how early in your relationship with him did you realize that he was struggling with addiction? Probably two months. I thought if he comes home and he wants to have some wine okay but then you see that it's not just two glasses, it's a bottle, then it's two bottles. And then their behavior starts to change. He would turn into this like angry, I'm so mad at myself. It was like a self anger. There were some nights or some days that I wouldn't even go in the bathroom and look in the mirror because I didn't want to look at myself. I didn't really want to die, but I didn't really want to live. Did suicide cross your mind? I don't think I ever thought about taking my own life. I consume so much that, you know, if I died, you know, I, I died. I had never told anybody about the secret of his, but really I was harming him by not telling people and not- Sort of enabling it yeah, by not. Yeah, I was being an enabler. Yeah. And that went on and on and on until finally a year later, I said, I can't do this anymore. I can't watch you kill yourself. Like you are going to, Kill yourself, kill someone else, or your career is gonna be done. At the time, you know, you're drinking and I'm doing drugs and it's everyone else's fault and I'm making excuses, you know? And, you know, I hadn't seen my son, I think before Cindy and I were together, I hadn't seen him for close to a year. Because you didn't want to or his mother didn't want you to see him? I think deep down inside me, I was afraid to be his father because I knew where I was at in my life and I didn't want him to see that. So take me through what rock bottom was for you. We went to a wedding we were supposed to go to together and she had many talks with me, you know, about try and just control yourself this time. And at this wedding, I went off the deep end. There was drugs involved and drinking, and I just looked into the crowd, and he was just zoned out. It was worse than it ever, ever been. I just was besides myself. I hated him. And at that point, I just realized, what am I doing? Like, I don't need to do this. After that, that was kind of the end of us. But I still was self-sabotaging. No matter what, I just, I had to self-sabotage, that's what I did. I honestly say I did not want to live. It like breaks your heart when you see someone like, that you love so much, 
killing themselves because they don't love themselves. I just looked at myself and said I need to get help. And so I made some calls and... Who did you call? I called my mom. What was that conversation like? She's like, do you want to get help? Or do you want to keep doing what you're doing? And she's like, maybe I have to bury my son one day. That yeah. must have hit you. It hit me very hard. The only thing I thought in my head was, all right, let's go to a meeting. So I looked for a meeting and found one and went uh, a day later. And what was that like? I was petrified. I was uncomfortable. I broke down, cried, shared. But at the same time, it was almost like I had a, a sense of relief. What would the message be that you want people to hear? You're not going to be judged for wanting to, have, to wanting to get help. I think that's the biggest thing. That takes courage to ask for help, and I think that's just the first step, but that's the biggest step, is admitting you need help. You're making the most of the second chance yeah. that you've yeah. been given. I am so grateful for where I'm at right now. I truly believe I'm living on borrowed time and I'm getting a second opportunity, a second chance at life, my career, being a husband, being a father. I'm thankful every day 